Step 3. Classical predictions. In this step, we will look at what the classical theory of electromagnetism, uh, electromagnetism predicts about the outcomes of the photoelectric experiment. So, we will look at each observation one by one and look at what the classical theory tells us we should expect and we will investigate whether it agrees with the observes, uh, observations of the experiment. So, observation number one. Uh, dependence of photoelectric kinetic energy on intensity. So, classical theory tells us that electrons absorb energy continuously from the electromagnetic wave. The electromagnetic wave is continuously coming, the light is constantly on, so it's transferring energy into our metal, into our electrons. Higher intensity leads to higher rate of energy transfer, producing more energetic uh, electrons and resulting in higher kinetic energy. Do we observe this experimentally? No. Photoelectron kinetic energy is independent of the light's intensity. In particular, we saw at the image here that the current is different for different intensities. But the kinetic energy we said is given by this delta Vs. And both of the intensities, uh, um, the graphs for both of the intensities collapse for this single value of delta Vs. In particular, we show that K max is equal to E times delta Vs. So experimentally, we don't observe any dependence between the intensity and the kinetic energy. So on this particular observation, the classical prediction is wrong. Let's look at the second observation. Time interval between the incidence of the light and the emission of the electrons. So classically, we expect that low intensity light carrying uh, um, small energy, transferring energy at a smaller rate into the electrons, will require some time in order to give enough transfer, enough energy to the electrons to be emitted. So from the moment we turn on the light and we use low intensity, there will be some measurable delay between turning on the light and actually observing the photoelectrons being emitted or reaching the collector plate uh, of the capacitor. And this makes perfect sense. Even very low intensity electromagnetic waves carry energy. It's just small energy and it takes longer for this energy to be transferred into the electrons. Experimentally, what do we observe? In fact, we observe that the emission of electrons is almost instantaneous after switching on the light. In particular, the measured time of emission is something of the order of a nanosecond and less. And this is independent of the intensity. So even when we turn the intensity of the incident light very, very, very low, electrons are still being uh, um, emitted almost instantaneously. This is a surprising, surprising fact. So again, our classical prediction is wrong. Let's move to our third observation. The dependence of ejection of electrons on light frequency. So classically, what we expect any electromagnetic wave, regardless of its frequency, carries energy. If it carries energy and this energy is then transferred into the electrons, the electrons should be uh, ejected or emitted from the metal. So we should observe photoelectrons for any frequency of the incident light. Do we see this experimentally? No. There is a very clear cutoff frequency given by this new C. If the light has frequency below this cutoff frequency, then no photoelectrons are observed. We don't measure any current in our experimental setup. And this is true regardless of the light's intensity. So intensity plays no role. It, it works also for small, also for uh, high intensities. What is important is the frequency of the light. And there is a very clear cutoff. If we are above, we observe photoelectrons. If we are below, we don't observe anything. And this cutoff frequency is a characteristic of the metal only. It's independent of the uh, light. So every metal, every material has a different measurable cutoff frequency. So again, we see that the predictions of our classical electromagnetic theory are wrong. And finally, we go to our final fourth observation, the dependence of electron kinetic energy on the light frequency. What does classical theory tell us? It tells us, tells us that there is no independence 
no dependence between kinetic energy of the photoelectrons and the frequency of the incident light. This kinetic energy should depend on the light intensity, as we commented in observation number one. Experimentally, what do we observe? We observe that the, uh, increasing the uh, frequency of the incident light also increases the maximum kinetic energy. So there is a very clear relationship between the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons and the frequency of the incident light. So again, the classical prediction is wrong. So, so far, we have considered four different observations, and on all four cases, the classical electromagnetic theory was giving us the wrong prediction that was not observed in the actual experiment. This is quite demoralizing. We have spent a couple of lessons developing this beautiful theory of uh, electromagnetism, and yet we cannot even describe a very simple phenomenon observable in a laboratory. But don't worry, in the next step, we will tell you how to fix it.